so when you, Steve, because you've thought so deeply about these issues, when you think about both either for yourself and your own philosophy, or when you think about what message you would like uh, to give humanity or, or what you think we should, you know, do you have a philosophy of value that you feel like is coherent for you? And, or do you have a vision that you think is coherent for society that could be nurturing and move the system in a generative direction? Um, that's a good question. And I can't, I mean, I am in no position to say that I have solved the problems I'm raising. Um, I'm still thinking through these issues. Um, but, but I can tell you what I am trying to do. I can be critical of positive psychology and the bag of virtue ethics and the like, but it's, it, that's, that's easy. I mean, it's pretty easy to be, to be an, even Nietzsche was aware of this. It's easy to say no. Um, right. What we need is to find something to say yes to um, mm -hmm. and to move our lives in a positive direction after we're done with our critique. Um, right. So what values matter to me? Intellectual honesty which I am now seeing as something intimately tied to generativity. It's not enough to just value being generative without the other things that make that what it is. Um, and so I want to be aware of, cognizant of the conditions that make meaningful living possible. So I'm interested in seeing to it that there's funding for the sort of medical research that will help, um, say, with regard to senile dementia. Um, I would I would I, I I would love to see us in a situation where nobody had to worry about dementia mm -hmm. in the final years of their lives, right. um, right. because I want people to have continued meaningful relationships with their parents and grandparents. Right. Um, so so I, all sorts of values start to come into focus as I start or as I think mm. about self as a generative project. So the other thing that's kind of interesting to me about generativity is um, it's the absolute antithesis, it seems, is of depression. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're authentically generative in an agenic and communal way, you're not preoccupied with yourself. One of the things that um, well, isn't, isn't, it's despair is the opposite, right? I mean, mm -hmm. is that in, in Erickson, isn't it despair? Is it generativity versus despair? Uh, generativity versus stagnation. Oh, which stagnation, is I'm sorry. Yeah, no, and, and that itself is an interesting image because I'll, I'll use this, this, I use, when I'm teaching um, Ericksonian theory, I use Scrooge from the Christmas Carol ah, as my image yeah. of the stagnant being. Um, oh. But what's interesting is a stagnant pool of water it has no water flowing in, no water flowing out. And if you swim in that water, you'll get sick in it. Um, and anybody who interacted with Scrooge in his pre-generative conversion days would get sickened spiritually by being right. too close to the stagnant pool of water. Um, but what I recall from, I mean, there's, there's a lot to critique in Freud's Morning in Melancholia, um, his classic text on depression. But one of the things that struck me when I read that is how profoundly narcissistic the depressive state is. Not narcissistic in a grandiose sense, in, sure. the, in the positive sense that, that we usually think of narcissism, right. but a very self-absorbed sense. It is that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to simplify the problem of depression by saying that the solution is to get out and be generous. But at the same time, the state of being generative, um, involved in the world meaningfully and feeling caring and powerful totally. is antithetical to being in the it's depressive a, state. hundred percent. And I mean, you know, right. And I, I certainly the vulnerabilities that people have and the things that will cause them to collapse into a shutdown of reciprocal narrowing of self-absorption, uh, absorption. I'm very empathetic to <laughs> you know, well, your behavioral like, shutdown yeah, theory. Yeah, I, I yeah, would call I mean, too. That's, that, um, that's certainly right. That's sort of the, right. We're going to ground it in animal behavioral science. Then we'll put it in the human context with self-consciousness and an affective system. And then all of a sudden watch the tunneling that so often happens, but it has this very strong self-absorption reciprocal narrowing feature that, that is uh, quasi narcissistic as the lost object of whatever life it could be becomes so ruminatively obsessive in relationship 
uh, to the heart, and then it pollutes the stagnated collapse. I'm also very empathetic how easy that can happen to people. You know, people, uh, the the dominoes are set up and we have a particular socio-ecological, biophysiological context that the vulnerable individual is very easy to get channeled into them. And and so I think we're both, as psychologists, very empathetic in a non-blaming way. Uh, so that's that's just basically the the point I wanted to you know add for both of us to say yep yep depression can happen and it sucks you know but it's a lot of it is this collapse into a reciprocal narrowing on the dark side of the heart yeah um, and and to return to to the question of what is it we can do to communicate with right, this? Right, right, so right. so this, this, the laity, the, the mm-hmm. lay person, the New York Times reading audience, the average everyday person, um, I think. We've got to find better ways to listen and, mm. and as academics, listen to what people are worried about, what people are concerned about. Contemporary political discourse, whatever we may think about, whatever a particular person says, they're concerned about something and their statements, however they come across, um, whether we agree with them politically or not, are expressing something about their situation in life. Totally. And we need to come to terms and understand that. One of the things I think I, I most appreciate about your blog is it goes back and forth between um, I, I, there'll be a, 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 a blog post on a particular concept or idea, mm-hmm. but sometimes it's keying in on a particular issue that matters yeah. um, to us collectively right now. Um, so what can we do as we're thinking through these issues to be more attuned to, this goes back to the method of correlation, Tillich wanted to study the work of 20th century existentialists, for example, to become aware of, be better in tune with what mattered to people that theology could then respond to. If we, if we don't do that, if I don't, to make this very concrete, if I don't listen to my students in general psychology to get a feel for who they are as people, um, to get an awareness of where they're coming from, um, then I'm not going to really be able to teach anything that matters to them. Um, so I need to be able to translate what we're talking about into language they get. Right. Right. And there's obviously an enormous amount of angst and care and passion, uh, uh, you know, about what's going on in the world. You can certainly feel that in the tense political discourse. You can see it in, in the passionate you know, political activity that we see. Um, and so if we can grab some of that fire, steal some of that culture and, artic- and speak to it, and then say that there's actually part of what's going, and here's what I would suggest, is, is certainly part of what's going on in terms of our current um, state, I'd like, you know, is that we are in a precarious moment in the world, um, uh, one in which the modern, modern industrial and sense-making system sp- spread out across the globe and now, but finds itself, you know, sort of in a potentially very dangerous place where I believe it sort of needs to evolve into a new sensibility, or if it doesn't, it may very well be uh, making itself increasingly vulnerable across a wide variety of different domains. And the angst, the political angst that we see like the United States, I think speaks to that felt sense. You know? yeah. uh, and certainly I think COVID activated a lot of people in that sense. So if we, you know, if we put, uh, put my clinician, hey, you're inspiring me, put my clinician hat on and think about what are the presenting problems that drive people <laughs> every day and then start from that point uh, to speak to those issues um, and then to begin to internalize frames that actually in the proper zone of proximal development set the stage for uh, a sense making that, un- that they can envision to be on a path uh, that is more generative uh, and, and embracing of the kind of values that they uh, find meaningful. Yeah. So.